can get at least three full reps with your body weight and then simply use the method that I outlined previously. I typically don't use the Smith machine for much, but this is one exercise where I have found it to be beneficial. I find that the Smith shrug variation places less stress on my lower back, and although the weights are on a fixed plane, it's such a short range of motion that it really doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Now everybody's different on this exercise. We all have different body structures, and some people simply aren't able to shrug the weights very high, while others can. Simply do your best to use a full range of motion, shrugging as high as you can. Try to imagine that you're trying to touch your ears with your shoulders. And this should be treated just like any other exercise, and that means taking the set all the way to muscular failure, until either your form starts to really slip, or until you're unable to move the weight any further despite your best efforts. Now, as I said before, it's usually best to lift a bit more explosively on shrugging movements. As long as you can perform the exercise with proper form, you should try to shrug as quickly and explosively as you can on each rep. And one other tip, straps are of the utmost importance when performing shrugs. If your forearms are giving out before your traps, then the exercise will be exponentially less effective. So always use straps for your shrugging movements. Okay, so same idea here, only this is the dumbbell variation. The advantage of the dumbbell variation is that it places less stress on the lower back than barbell style shrugs, since you aren't forced to hold the weights right out in front of your body, you can kind of hold them more at your sides, and this forces the exertion through your body rather than out in front. I usually try not to hold them right at my sides or right out in front, but rather on sort of a diagonal position as you can see here. Again, try to lift explosively, always use straps for shrugging movements, and just like any other exercise, you want to take the set to muscular failure. Now for the sake of this video, I'm not using a spotter here. I had one guy who was filming it for me, but I didn't really bring anyone else along to spot me. But you know, I've been training for many years, and I know my body very well and when I should be stopping my sets. Uh, but for most of you out there who are less experienced, I would always recommend a spotter whenever performing leg presses as a safety precaution. So your feet should be placed near the top of the platform and roughly shoulder width apart. Notice how I bring the weights down until my thighs are just pressing up against my stomach. But everybody's slightly different here in terms of how far they can lower the weight. You've got to be careful. If you, if you bring the weights too far back, you can end up placing a lot of stress in your lower back. This is a pretty grueling exercise when performed to true muscular failure. Most people stop far short without even realizing it. And also, most people highly underestimate how much weight they're capable of using here. Also notice how I'm pressing up until my knees are just short of locking out, and this keeps the stress on the quads at all times, and also takes the stress off of your knees. And again, you can see just how difficult this exercise is. Coming up to the growth rep right here. Now you can see how grueling this last rep is. And again, I would recommend a spotter at all times. I usually do use a spotter, but for this video I wasn't able to. Leg presses are a very effective movement for quad, glute, and hamstring development. I would consider them to be the second best overall thigh exercise, with squats being the obvious leader. But again, because of my lower back not cooperating with me at the time of this filming, I wasn't able to include squats in the routine. Um, it can often be tough to know just when to stop on the leg press exercise. I wouldn't recommend taking leg presses all the way to complete and total muscular failure, since that can be dangerous for obvious reasons. What I would recommend doing is taking the set to the point where the last rep is a very difficult struggle, but unless you know that you'll be able to complete one more rep, that's where you should stop the set. Just to the point where, if you were to attempt another rep, you probably wouldn't be able to complete it. And as you gain more experience, it will become easier and easier for you to know when that time is. Now I've decided to include a second set of leg presses here because of the limitations that I had on my thigh training during the filming of this footage.
But this here is pretty much the same deal as the first set. Again, notice how much time I took before the set to really clear my mind and to get focused and ready. This is especially important with leg exercises since they are by far the most demanding muscle group to train and can really require a lot of mental toughness and discipline. And again, like I said before, um, with leg presses, you should simply be taking the set to the point where the last rep is very difficult and where you feel that if you attempted another rep, there's a good chance that you wouldn't be able to complete it. As you can see here, there's no way that if I attempted another rep that I would get it. Standing calf races are basically the bread and butter of solid calf development, although I will admit that calves have always been by far my weakest muscle group, and they're also a very common weak point that a lot of lifters had. You'll usually find that if you weren't blessed with good calf building genetics, it can be extremely difficult to get them to really respond in a significant fashion. In any case, notice how I lower myself until my heels are hanging down as far off the platform as I can get them to and then raising myself up as high as I possibly can. Everyone will have a slightly different range of motion given their body structure, uh, but you should make sure that you're raising and lowering yourself as far as you comfortably can. And you need to treat calves just like any other muscle group. Most people stop far short of muscular failure on calf exercises. They usually go until it starts to burn and it starts to hurt a bit, but they stop way before they really should. And you can see here that these last couple reps are very difficult and that on this last rep, I'm just barely able to complete it. The biggest pointer I could give you for calf training is that you need to really push yourself. Calf training is actually very demanding. It burns like hell. You'll usually be able to move a lot of weight and this can make that tiny little rep range extremely stressful. But you need to be mentally tough. You need to blast through it just like you would any other exercise. If you stop short,